Okay, so it's the next video. Um, obviously, very little time lapsed here, but uh, so I say to you, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, yet again, as my wife is looking at me over there. <laughs> She's smiling at me. Um, <clears throat> it is Alex again, and I am continuing to create out or script out our SQL schema that we're going to use for our grocery list application in our .NET. Once we get this all scripted out and everything, we're going to check it into our GitHub repository. And so we've got it and we can bring it back down uh, to use for our uh, .NET uh, information, our, our .NET uh, solution. So let's continue where we left off at. <clears throat> so I was talking about making a scalar. And so what a scalar does is it is basically like a temporary field that you're going to use to pass data into your stored procedure. Um, scalars start with the at symbol or the at sign. Um, and then you are going to give it a name. So we're going to just give it a, a name. So I usually just give it the same you know, kind of a name or something descriptive here. Uh -oh. I need you to leave. I need you to leave, buddy. Go away. Um, we're going to give the scalar uh, the same kind of a name. So, um, but you can start a scalar with a lowercase as long as it's got the at some sign on there. Now, the type of variable matters, obviously. Um, you want it to match whatever you're putting into the table. So the column that you're looking at is the column that you're going to um, match to. So like that. Now, um, we see that we have this item price here, item name. And so we're just basically going to give us the same. And actually, what we could do. Let me just do this. Just copy all of this right here. This is probably easier. Copy that. Paste that. And I'll put my at, 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 and at. OK. Did I download? No, I didn't. I really wish I could hit Alt and then drag my mouse down. I can't do that, though. That so sucks. Delete. I could use... <laughs> I could use the... Uh, poor man's SQL... Um, formatter too. Um, so we've got all our fields here and I'm just going to lowercase these so that they so we can definitely make sure that we've got a difference there. Okay. <clears throat> now the next thing we're going to do now, by putting not nulls on these, we make these, these are required. And again, uh, since we're doing an insert, we don't really need the updated by and the updated date ones. So we'll get rid of those for this procedure. And then now we're going to put the word as, and then begin. And that tells it that, hey, we're going to start our, our um, store procedure build out. We're going to set no count to on. And what no count does is it it's added to prevent extra results set from interfering with select statements. Don't ask me what it's about. I just know you have to have it on and you turn it off later. <laughs> um, and then 
And here is where we can design our SQL query to do some checking on our fields uh, to uh, make sure that we're not doing any kind of SQL injection here. Um, some, un you know, we talked about SQL injection in a previous video, so I'm not going to, you know, relitigate that. But <clears throat> what we can do is we can do our, um, we can do our insert and we can create a, basically a temporary table down here. And we can say, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just create this little temp table here. We don't have to do it that way, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's like a little throwaway table. Create, no, declare, at table, at temp table like this <clears throat> and instead of these being the ads there I'm going to delete those, delete, the, oh, oh, oh. delete, 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 okay, and then we're going to do a safe insert into our table. Now, what does that mean? So what we can do is we can do an insert statement. Um, by selecting rows that are already in the table uh, to make sure that we're not and even though we've got the primary key in there we don't want to select the same row in the table more than once okay so we're going to do a select we're just going to grab these fields here and we're going to do Actually, we're going to do a first an insert into our temp table. Insert into temp table. Like this. Item quantity. Item price uh, is taxable. Added by, added date. Deleted indicator. We're going to do a select from the shopping lists table, and we're going to select those columns from our shopping list table. But what we're going to do. Eh, I'm making this a little harder than I should. We don't we don't need to do all of that. Let's just make it real simple. <clears throat> but what we can do is we can um, declare um, we can declare some temp variables. So declare I name. And I'm going to do it this way. Declare. High name. Declare. Quantity I 
price. High tax. And actually, let's make this B tax. It's going to be D price is going to be I quantity. S name for string. are going to be semicolons instead of colons. <clears throat> Alrighty. So we're going to do some validation. That's that word I was looking for the other day. Uh, we're going to do some validation here. Um, and we can say if um, Item name is null, then no. If item name is null, I think it's like this begin, end. So, what that does is it it will do the logic that's inside of this else end begin end um it'll do the logic that's inside of this if conditional right there so if the item name is null then what we want to do is we want to print to the screen item and we're going to go back up here and change our table here well no, I guess we don't yeah we're going to change our table up here so we're going to drop our table and, and recreate the table so and actually, we can do that real quick. So let's just change this real quick to if exists. And then we can just select this right here. We'll just have to make sure we take it back. Make that a U. This is a string. This is an integer. It's a decimal. It's a Boolean. This is a string. This is a time date. <coughs> date time, I mean. <clears throat> this is a string. Time date. And this is a Boolean. And let's just run this real quick. Mm -mm. not 
just run that one query drop table dbo dot let's just run this one right quick let's delete that okay there we go and now we'll just rerun this bam there we go <clears throat> and we won't worry about the scalars because we're doing it down here so if the item name is null we can say print item name is null else what we want to do is we want to set at s name equals item name that so that's how you do a conditional right there um, we also can add a try catch in here so let's do that let's say begin try and then down here going to say end try begin catch and catch like that okay <clears throat> now I'm not sure how we want to do the um, let, well, let's Google that. Let's see if we can't Google um, validation. I think there is SQL server valid characters. Because we don't want people <clears throat> to um, put special characters in there. So we want to get rid of any non-printable ones. Can we do that? Let's see how we want to do that. We want to do validation, valid email check, validation right there. And it'll just check to see. And we can always do, we can do all of the validation on our um, application side anyway. So let's see. Yeah, let's look there again. Let's see. Create an info table that applies validation. Check. That's only for. Oh, I guess you can do that. Uh, validate. Validate. String. Format. <clears throat> Well, I guess we can do it this way. And we can add this check constraint on the table. And then we can actually put the AZ, AZ in there. I think it's we want this right here. Yeah. But for now, 
we won't worry too much. We can come back and add the validation. And most of the validation is going to be done on the client side anyway before we even hit the table. So we can we have more control. Not to say we can't put validation on our SQL server, because we can, but it's a lot easier to put validation on the application side to prevent that from happening. It's just so much easier. Um, let the data be the data, but do the validation on the other side. So let's just go ahead and just put this in here like so, because these can't be nulls anyway. We'll put a tr we'll put that try in there like we had in there before. Leave it there. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a coworker who's probably if he saw this he'd be cringing right now. I'm like, why are you doing it that way? <laughs> okay. We'll copy all of these. Turn these declares into sets. Set, 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 and set. Now, equals, um, this is going to be quantity, item quantity. is going to be equal at item price. This is going to be equal at is taxable. This one is going to be equal at added by. And this is going to be equal at added date. that and delete equals and we're going to make the deleted indicator um, a zero because we're putting new records in to the new rows into the table all right so we're going to move our data from our input items there or scalers I mean and now we're going to do our insert. We don't have to do this temp table insert now. We're just going to do the regular insert here. Insert into. And those are the fields that we need. And it's not liking something here. What's it not liking? Oh. We got to put the right names there now. So item name is S, item price is D, item quantity is I, is text supposed to be for Boolean, string day, uh, T for time, and B for deleted indicator. And then down here, we're going to put our at S name at the price at I quantity at is taxable. No, not B taxable, B tax at S uh, added by. at t date and we're just going to pass in we could just pass in a zero there we probably don't even need this right here because it's just going to default to that so we don't need this one right here get rid of that there we go okay so it's going to do an insert into there. And that's our list of um, columns. And this is our passed in parameters from our store proc. <clears throat> and so 
then what we want to do is we want to um, get back the number of rows that were inserted into the table. Um, there's multiple ways to do that. One way to do that is to get you can just do a select statement after that, but I mean, that's another select statement. Um, SQL Server get count of inserted rows. I mean, it's just going to be one row anyway. And get count of rows inserted by a transaction. And there, select row count. that we just come down here and say select now oh wait now what we also want to do is we don't want them to be able to put the exact same thing in there multiple times like I was doing earlier <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're going to do an outer join on this table I'm gonna give it T here Actually, we're going to do it like this. Insert into um, insert into select yeah insert into I always draw a blank when I'm doing this I, I do this a million times but I always am drawing a blank and I know I just did this not too long ago for a different um, thingamajigger there Let's see. Now <clears throat> you can do that. Yeah, let's do it that way. Insert into that. Uh, can you do that? I'm curious to see if I can do that one. Um, select. that hmm. How do I want to do that? From CBO shopping lists. I don't think I'm doing this the right way, y'all. Uh, left outer join. CBO shopping lists. T on with no lock. there on um, S 
this item name equals at item name and s item oh wait I can just do it on the one uh, s uh, you unique ID equals you unique ID where you unique ID is null let's see Gonna tell me it's not there. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Say T one T dot where T dot. And this is going to be not unique ID I. I, I, and this is going to be I dot unique ID. So <clears throat> this should never happen, but it's just called a safe insert if I've got this written the right way. Uh, so let me explain what's happening here. Let me save this first. Uh oh, what did I just do? Shoot. Uh-oh. What did I just do? <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, there we go. Did I, what did I do? Oh, it aired. It should have aired. Um, yeah, I don't know what I did there. That's kind of weird, but. We need to make that bigger. What the heck? Okay, this is getting weird here. Okay. What did you do, Alex? Cancel. Um, what did you do? Why is it disconnected there? Shouldn't be disconnected. There we go. Don't worry about that. Oh, I think I might have disconnected myself here. <clears throat> well, shoot the boot. Let's con let's reconnect. That was strange. I didn't know I had done that. Okay. <clears throat> Back to our regular scheduled programming. Okay, so I thought I was saving that and I must have disconnected myself. I guess we can get rid of this too here. Get rid of that right there. If exists stored proc create 
create procedure, begin. Gonna have an end down here, so let's store end down there. End. Okay, there's our end. So basically, it's it should do a very simple. Um, it should do a very simple. Um, control S. A very simple um, safe insert. So let me go back up. <clears throat> We're going to insert into these columns all of our fields here with our defaulted delete indicator as well. Um, we're selecting any row from this table. We're joining on the same table and we're looking for any rows where the unique identifier is a null. That it should never happen that way, the way we've got the table. And this is probably overkill. And if it doesn't work, I'll just simplify it up some. So I won't worry about that um, right yet. Um, now, if we, um, if we, are able to um, get the number of records um, back, then outside of our catch here, we should just be able to do a simple select statement. Select count. Actually, it's going to be here. And, and then down here, we're just going to do a quick select. inserted there select count no actually yeah and up here we'll say set inserted equals row count I think that will get the number of rows that were inserted into the table and then select at I inserted something like that <clears throat> and then if it errors here print there was Records inserted like that. Who oh boy. So I think we've got it. I think we've almost pretty much got it licked here. So I'm going to save that. Control S. 
and then I'm going to run this schema and see what happens here. Uh-oh, it doesn't like something there. So on line 12 of our new rows, incorrect where not. Well, let's see, what do we have here? Not. There's our create table. It's in the stored proc. Uh, we probably have something Oh, duh. These don't need to be there because these are statements. No, they need they need to be there. Not no, not no, not no. Yeah, that's right. Um, doesn't like that. Executing at line 44. Incorrect syntax at not. R char int decimal not no bit not no var char. Maybe it's this right here. Wait a minute. I thought you had to have I'm drawing a blank, y'all. Drawing a blank. Store prod. Yeah, that's what I thought. Delete. 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 This is probably the issue. Delete. And delete. Control S. Let's run that. Incorrect near not. Line 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's not liking something in here. I'll take these out of there. Save it and run it again. There we go. That was the issue. So let's put our not nulls back up here. Because in the procedure, we want them to be not known. We want them all to be um, required. Control S. Let me run it again. The parameter at item name has been declared at not null. Not null parameters are only supported with natively compiled modules except for inline. What? Other. Let's see if we get the same thing again for the next line. Yeah, that's what I thought. There we go. Try S. This should run with no issues. Yeah. So we've created our script. <clears throat> um, if the procedure exists, which it did, 
Oh, we can actually put a print, a print in here that tells us that we actually dropped the stored proc. And then in here, I'll just put there print dropping this right here. go the five you see we've got our row there and we it's just a um, all it is is a uh, uh, there we go say print inserting into and then down here we can say um, we'll leave that alone all right Okay, so now we've got a stored proc that will run, which should run. So in the next video, we're going to execute our stored procedure. So until then, God bless and have a good day. Peace.